I personally went patrolling last night in the West End, and I spotted at least two foreign echoes. This is an outrage. We shall chase Good these evening, intruders Dr. down. Good evening, Dr. Reed. How does it feel to be this evening's centerpiece? Figuratively. I feel perfectly fine. Do I have cause for concern? Do not be alarmed. The Ascalon Club has a tried and tested policy for choosing its initiates. May I ask who you are, sir? Why would you be interested? Well, as you seem to be the only man in the room with a beating heart, you draw quite a bit of attention yourself. Ah, vampire senses never cease to fascinate me. They dwarf those of mere mortals. I am Aloysius Dawson, by the way. Are you a member of the club? Yes, I am. And I have been for many years. And will be until the day I die. What can you tell me about it? It's not really my place to give you such information. I am merely a mortal member. And a dying one at that. Are you sick? Personally. I consider my advancing years are a sickness in itself. My body is slowly abandoning me, Dr. Reed. Are you not afraid? You are surrounded by vampires. Sir, it's for that very reason that I joined the club in the first place. Is not the nature of this club a secret shared by only a privileged few? My dear Dr. Reed, I have spent years and a fortune precisely to gather that kind of information. So you asked for membership? I have been a member of many clubs in many countries. But I must admit, this one is my favorite. What can you tell me about Lord Redgrave? I would not dare speak of our chairman without his consent. Mr. Dawson, of Dawson and Dawson, the wealthiest man in England. It is a pleasure to meet such a prominent figure of London. A withering London figurehead, to be precise. Are you sick, Mr. Dawson? I am a doctor, you know. My case is beyond the scope of traditional medicine. I have spent fortunes on the world's most competent doctors to arrive at that diagnostic conclusion. I'm sorry to hear that, sir. Should I suppose that you're here in search of some form of immortality? Absolutely not. I'm here to implement my plan to save the city I was born in. To cast out the ghastly evil that has us all on our knees. What do you know about the Guard of Prewin? I should not say this, but I admire their commitment. This is what the nation needs right now. But they are our enemies. They are not mine, Dr. Reed. Would you help them? No. There is a time for such methods. But brute force will not be enough to fight this plague. We have to think differently. What is the situation like in this part of town? I am sure Lord Redgrave will enlighten you more effectively than I. Money cannot solve every problem. This mysterious epidemic is going to require more than money can buy. You're right. Money is nothing unless one has the will to wield it. I have a plan, sir. A radical one that will save all that is essential in London. What is your plan, then? Quarantine and barricades are futile. What we need is a wall. A formidable unscalable wall to isolate the deserving from the infected masses. By doing so, you would create two separate ghettos. What if the disease gets past the wall? The results would be disastrous. Not if we eliminate all suspected cases of infection as soon as they appear necessary sacrifice. Are you not mistaking sacrifice for summary execution? Why do you care? Are you not a vampire? 
removed from all mortal concerns. Decisiveness is what the city needs, and it needs it now. That went well, did it not? It is always useful to bolster the troops' morale, especially before a difficult battle. You have the makings of a general, my lord. I was, though very long ago. Well, not quite a general, but a proud defender of the crown. So why did you really want to meet me? Straight to the point again, young Ekon. All right, let's talk, you and I, Lance Sparrow. I'm listening. According to my spies, you have worked with Dr. Edgar Swansea on the epidemic, and your findings were quite alarming. Do you know Edgar Swansea? Not personally, but I have been told he has some sort of immortal fetish and is a good friend of yours. Does it bother you that I consider him my good friend? As long as you reveal nothing of the club's inner workings, why should I forbid you engaging in conversation with the good Dr. Swansea? You are spying on me. Not personally. I rarely leave this building. But once he found you, Fergal kept me informed. Until you put an end to his mission. Who was Fergal? I don't see him sipping tea with the others in the club. Fergal Bansha was my squire of sorts. Even before becoming that magnificent beast, he was a brute. He served me well for decades. No, I mean, what was he? He was clearly no ordinary vampire. No, he was a Vulcod. All muscles and instinct. Quite the rare breed. Ferociously territorial. Mortals often mistake them for werewolves. You do know I killed him? Yes. Will you bear ill will towards me for his death? Of course not. Your victory was quite impressive and courageous. You earned my respect. Yes, I'm convinced the recent invasion of frenzied scowls in London is directly linked to the epidemic. This is not the Spanish flu, but something else. I would be glad to hear more of your discoveries, Dr. Reed. But for now, my main concern is the security of London's inhabitants, both mortal and immortal. What do you mean? Alarmed by the epidemic, the guard of Prewen has started a war against us British vampires. To appease the situation, we must eradicate the skulls. I have met peaceful and wise Skarls. To exterminate them means we are no better than vampire hunters. Skarls are hideous, shameful creatures that give all Ekon a bad name. So, what do you want me to do? I want you to investigate the city thoroughly. I have reason to fear there are cases of contagion in this part of town. Our absolute priority is to find and cleanse them. And how would you like me to proceed? By all means necessary, Dr. Reed. You are now a member of the Ascalon Club, and you have carte blanche. Interrogate the locals, follow all the leads you find, and get results.
Welcome to the Ascalon Club, then, Dr. Reed. I think Lord Redgrave just suggested I was sired by an ancient vampire. Women of all... Good evening, Miss Ashbury. And good evening to you, Dr. Reed. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual recently? A few days ago, I spotted a strange house while campaigning for women's suffrage. Awful smell. No answer when I knocked. Where is it? It's the Mullaney's. A nice family who live in a big house near the park in the eastern part of this neighborhood. Goodbye, Charlotte. Give my best regards. She's been quite busy these last... knock at people's doors during the day. I'm sure you can spare me a few minutes. For old time's sake. Of course you may enter, Jonathan. They're not always welcome here. But at this hour of night... Thank you. 
It's locked, all right. It's a pleasure to see you again, Venus. So you return from the war in one piece, too. Thank God. My Clarence is back home, too. How is the old rascal? Probably outside, chasing ghosts and chimeras. Clarence has changed a lot since he returned from the war, you know. How have you been since the last time we met? How long has it been? Three years now? I've done my duty. Like all British women. You have no idea what it was like. To wait for months without knowing if I'd still be a wife or a widow. I understand. Luckily, this part of town has been saved from the worst of the bombings. From what I've seen. Yes, and it's also true about the epidemic. The flu has killed here too, of course, but not on such a large scale as in other parts of town. Venus, why do you worry so much about your family's reputation? Everyone laughs at Clarence now. And they avoid me because they believe I share his insane opinions. I'm a leper in my own community. Have you noticed anything peculiar about the neighborhood recently? You mean except for your return to town? No. Oh, and again, Jonathan. Please accept my condolences for your sister. Thank you, Venus. It was so sudden. And I've been so busy, I haven't spoken to anyone about it. I wish I could have assisted at the funeral, but you know, it's been so quick. And what with the epidemic in the streets? There's no need to apologize, my dear. It's normal, considering the circumstances. No, it's not. I am sure that Clarence has not even thought to present you his condolences. He is too busy with his penny-dreadful stories. Why is my return so surprising? It's more an unexpected happy end than a surprise. You and Clarence, back from the war. You have no idea how hard it's been for me. Tell me about Clarence's obsession with vampires. It drives me so crazy, it makes my stomach hurt. I was so relieved to have him back. But I quickly realized he'd lost his mind in France. I understand your irritation, Venus. But you have to accept the trauma Clarence endured on the battlefield. The question is simple, Jonathan. Is my husband mad? Yes or no? Do vampires exist? Or is Clarence a lunatic? So you don't believe Clarence? If poor Mary, bless her soul, had tried to convince you of the existence of bloody vampires, would you have believed her? Seriously? The important question is, what do you really think of your husband? I'm tough, Jonathan. He should have told me the horrors he witnessed, however appalling it was, instead of inventing a fantasy about blood-drinking monsters. What do you think about Clarence squandering his fortune on his obsession? Soon we'll be poor and forced to sell the house. Where will we go? In which filthy, infected part of town will we end up? I'm so afraid. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? The McPhersons. I heard they locked themselves in their own house. They could just be afraid of getting sick. Perhaps you're right. But if I were you, I'd pay them a visit. A big house, reachable through a courtyard, to the north of the railway bridge. Goodbye for now. You know that you 
you are always welcome here. But at this hour... Someone you're close to! Good evening, old chap. Are you alright? I won't lie to you, Johnny. I'm not a well man. Do you realize you are ruining your family, Clarence? Don't you see the risk here? Money isn't important. Not important when it is a matter of life and death. That is what my dear Venus cannot understand. People will laugh at you, if they don't already. Think about your wife and your position. Think about your future. I understand my wife's embarrassment, but... Gossips don't kill, vampires do. There'll be no future if people don't open their eyes. I can't believe I'm telling you this, but if warning people is that important to you, why not choose a more efficient way to spend your money? Don't you think I tried? I knocked at every door, went to every bank, I even tried to be published. No, Jonathan. This is a one-man war. I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Can you help me? Infection is everywhere these days. But if you ever go to the park near that swanky house belonging to the, the Malanies... Yes? What about the Malanies? What about their house? Not enough noise for a big family with children. Not enough movement. Closed doors. What is going on? You need some rest, Clarence. Dr. Reed. A great night, what? I'm investigating the source of the epidemic in this district. Have you noticed anything unusual? Not really. Wait, now that you mention it, I don't see the McPhersons in my favorite restaurants. They love delicate meals too, you understand. Thank you. It may be nothing, but I'll investigate anyway. Where do they live? They have a house in the southern part of the district, somewhere north of the railway bridge. There is a courtyard, if I remember rightly. Goodbye, Mr. Russell.
that building is under quarantine. Could this be what I'm looking for? I cannot enter.
mutation. Could it be a new stage in the disease's evolution? So the husband had an affair with Doris Fletcher.
If you wish to stay tonight, your room is ready, Mr. Jonathan. As long as you have the money.
This district seems to get uglier every year. Hello, Mr. Petrescu. Hello, Dr. Reed. Come on in. Yes? Do you need some help, Mr. Petrescu? I am very tired, but that is all. I don't need you, Doctor. Well, I think you do. Take this, and you'll feel better. Free drugs from an English doctor? <laughs> How is the sanitary situation in Whitechapel? We hold on, despite the epidemic. Armed patrols have been seen in the vicinity for a few nights, but they stayed away from the dispensary. Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu. Good evening, Harry. May I come in? Sure. Sure. Is there only pain and suffering in this world? So, may I ask you a few questions? I'm not bothered. Do you need any medical help, young man? Yes, I do. I feel so tired. I don't know if it's the epidemic, but everything seems so hard. You'll feel better with this. But you need to get a grip, young man. Medication alone won't cure melancholia. I'm not sure, man. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Is there only pain and suffering in this world?
chapel is not... Good evening, Mr. Nethercott. And good evening to you too, my good sir. Can I be of any help? Do you need medical attention, sir? It may be wise to let you prescribe me something. I don't feel like I should. I understand your appetite for words and macabre. The nutrition of... I'll leave you alone, sir. Hello again, miss. Camellia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Hmm. A stubborn and mute comrade. Hello, Camellia. How are you, partner? Come on, girl. Smile. Don't you know Dorothy and I have an agreement? We're on the same side. No? All right then, as you wish. You don't seem to need my medical attention for now. Very well. Goodbye then. Good evening, Doctor. Can I help you? Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, Doctor. Who knows what I may have caught during my investigation. If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Good evening, Christina. Change your mind, Mr. Reed? Goodbye, miss. You pay one way or another. Please, Joe. How long have we known each other? We distribute flowers at this hour of night.
Amen.